So I'm sure you all agree that the, the elite, the governing class, are acting extremely immature. And why are they doing st stupid stuff like, you know, type of people to put a whoopee cushion under Jesus' seat or something? Very, very immature. How do I know that the world uh, is not right with God? How do I know that the Bible ends with rape by deception? Okay, look at the word rapture. It's rape, root, scramble. The root, the root cause, for example, the root, the source. Okay, the root, the route. Okay, and rut, an obstacle. Psalm 9, okay, it says the, the nation, the wicked go down the realm of the dead, all the nations that forget God. So why are the elite acting like complete bitches, the essence of bitch, a governing coward at the most important time in history? Well, part of it is they've gone insane because they are the essence of rapists. Bear with me, okay? The rapture isn't enough. Isaiah 13, when we get to verse 16, will overkill it. There's no way around it. You'll see that there's a lot of Jews, liberal Jews, conservative Jews, white people, LGBT people. They're, they're at the core of this thing, of this, this, this rape by deception and rape by force. And there's a lot of coercion. You might just call it rape by coercion because most people see through what they're doing. And they, they've joined them out of fear and stupidity and being dumbed down. So drugs, psychology, what have you. So Isaiah 13, a prophecy against Babylon. A prophecy against Babylon that Isaiah son of Amos saw. Raise a banner on a, bill, on a bare hilltop. I live in the hills, mind you. It's not a coincidence. Shout to them, beckon to them to enter the gates of the nobles. I am the gate and the rally point, right? Nobles, right? You know them by their fruit. You know who's the king of kings by focused moral intensity, okay? Universal pinpoint and moral precision. Not church propaganda, not state propaganda, not psychology, not your, your family's little network, okay? But true righteousness. The one who does what is right is righteous. It says, I believe, 1 John 3 or something like that says, don't let anyone fool you, because they're going to fool you on this issue. The one who does what is right is righteous. The gates of the nobles, the virtuous, the righteous, the morally precise, okay? Verse 3, I have commanded those I have prepared for battle. I have summoned my warriors to carry out my wrath, those who rejoice my tribe. Remember, the, the craftsmen are really in rebellion. The nerds, the craftsmen, people who pretend to be warriors, the military police, intelligence agencies, other, you know, other, other people, that, and they claim to be martial arts, they're not Okay, they're just craftsmen, illusion, psychology, putting on a show. They say things like the show must continue, the theater of war, Dionysus ritual madness. So what is going on here? Okay. A wife of noble character who can find, right? Warriors to carry out the wrath. Verse four, listen, a noise in the mountains like that of a great multitude. Listen, an uproar among the kingdoms like nations massing, massing together. The Lord Almighty is mustering an army for war. Where? In the heavens. Before I even read the next verse, I knew that it had to be spiritual. You think he's mustering all these, 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 the militaries of this world? Are you kidding me? Why they're raping people? Why they're upholding pedophile rings and one in four little girls are molested in America? Well, let's keep it going before they, my, my phone cuts out. Okay. Five. They... Okay, so in verse four, it says, The Lord Almighty is mustering an army for war. Not frat guys for a party. Not military guys for a worldly war. Not police officers, you know, for... A government law enforcement war, not gang members, etc. Okay, but people in the spirit of God, divine, holy people. Okay, in this case, it seems to be just me. This is how it ends. That's what it's saying. And first and foremost, the spirits um, in the afterlife, right, in the heavens. Verse 5 They come from faraway lands, from the ends of the heavens, the Lord and the weapons of his wrath to destroy the whole country. Now, you look at it. These people went as far as to put red on my lips with with um, food and dyes in the food and so on and so forth and editing the videos and, and things like that. To them, they just keep insisting on mocking the image of God, the most righteous person ever. And if you don't believe in God, you're parts of cu uh, cultures that create whose expected output is one in four little girls being molested, one in nine little boys, and they're mocking the righteous and raping women and mass exploitation, drugging, etc. Verse 6, well, for the day of the Lord is near, people will come, and it will come like destruction from the Almighty. Okay, well, for the day of the Lord is near, it will come like destruction from the Almighty. So spiritual destruction. Pitiful people will be the ones who remain with lives not worth living, wives not worth marrying. You see that in Jeremiah 50 where it says they're going to be weaklings, fools, spiritually plundered. They'll go mad with terror. They're cowards. Seven, because of this, all hands will go limp. Every heart will melt with fear. And of course, the limp 
uh, is one of the derogatory terms for homosexuals, right? They'll become like pansies, sissies, like those homosexuals to be diplomatic that everyone knows is a sissy. Okay. Um, ter and of course, people using the contrast to pretend that they're masculine, right? In their various groupings in life, rich and, and soldiers and so on and so forth. A terror will grip, terror will seize them. Pain and anguish will grip them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look aghast at each other, their faces aflame. Okay, their collective energy will be giving birth to a more evil and pathetic world, right? That's why it says terror will seize them and pain and anguish will grip them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look aghast at each other, their faces aflame. Nine, see the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day of wrath and fierce anger to make the land desolate and to destroy the sinners within it. Isaiah 24 makes this clear that it's the whole world. It's not just Babylon in the Middle East, right, where Babylon used to be. Babylon's system, right, Zeus, okay, Set, the pagan deities, the, the, the themes of nations. It is the whole world, okay. Ten, the stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. A lot of these stars make up constellations, right? They, they also make up uh, people like the, the Greek heroes, right? And so on, so Pegasus, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these these guys who people thought were good guys or decent enough to marry these ideas that are pervasive in all the cultures and all the nations in the world. If you look carefully, they're these kind of pagan star cult ideas, astrology, astronomy, okay, zodiac signs, what have you. They will reveal themselves to be demons, as we see going on right now. Right, people have revealed that they're scum. Look at how they handled the pandemic, and so on and so forth. All right. The rising sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. So what is happening here in, in the original version is they're, they're not supposed to persecute me. As I leave, the sun is no longer there. It's darkened. It's out of your reach. Okay. They're not supposed to change the way I look and so on and so forth. Okay. So obviously, first and foremost, God's interpretation of what should happen is the true interpretation, not some sages, some weirdos in the West and so on and so forth. Okay. So... The stars of, hev of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. So the moon represents females. There, there, there won't be any females worth marrying. There won't be any masculine sun. The sun is a symbol of masculinity. The bridegroom, like a champion. Psalm 19, it's a symbol of the masculine warrior champion and, and people in his spirit. So masculinity and femininity in their true form will be gone. I will punish the world for its evil, the wicked for its sins. I will put an end to the arrogance of the haughty and the pride of the ruthless. Okay. I will make people scarcer than pure gold, more, more rare than the gold of Ophir. In Psalm 45, it says the bride, okay, the gold is the treasures in heaven, the spiritual worth, righteousness, the gold of Ophir, right, righteousness, femininity, noble femininity will disappear, right? It becomes scarce, it will be gone, okay? 13, therefore I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will shake from its place at the wrath of the Lord Almighty in the day of his burning anger. Okay, remember, as things go scarce, they disappear, right? Like a hunted gazelle, like sheep without its shepherd, they will all return to their own land. They will flee to their native land. So the profane lands, they have no divine leaders. So all the cultures of the world are profane. There's no actual pro. They will go back to their native land, plundered by the Babylonian Western system, right? They kill off the more brave people from every culture, the righteous and so on, and they'll be, they'll be plundered. They'll be mad with terror and so on and so forth, okay? Whoever is captured will be thrust through. All who are caught will fall by the sword. All who are caught outside the divine order will be slain by the sword of the spirit of God, right? The sword of the essence of, of truth in scripture, righteousness, justice, the spirit of God. These are characteristics of the spirit of God. The truth will slay them. Like a thief in the night argument, right? They interpret um, uh, Jesus as, okay, I'm gonna leave that part out because it's, it's confusing, uh, you know. So basically they, they interpret it as, Jesus is Lucifer, but they're just idiots playing a stupid game. It's a long story. Anyway, verse 16. The infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted and their wives violated. I can't go over this part enough. Isaiah 13, 16 makes it clear that your planet is a rape planet and the, all who remain in the flesh are rapists. They're, they're complicit with rape, right? If you hold down somebody to be raped, you're a rapist too, whether you rape them or not. So they're rapists, raped by deception, raped by coercion, raped by psychology-based deception, misdirection, drugs, alcohol, you name it. All sex becomes rape. That is why Isaiah 13, 16 must be true. 
Their infants will be dashed to pieces spiritually before their eyes. Their houses will be looted and their wives violated. Like the house of David, right? So a lot of people are dumb enough to read this and assume that it must be literal and that's all there is to it. It is spiritually speaking first and foremost. But yes, when, it, when we look at the, the spirit of having sex in its various forms, it is rape when it, it lacks the spirit of God and the spirit of sense and the spirit of a justified sexual uh, uh, process. Anyway, so spiritually, and they interpret it as literally, and all sex is raped by deception other than me, uh, since the deceiver spirit is in them. So it's raped by deception. Remember, Satan is the adversary. He's the deceiver, right? He's the deceiver. So in the spirit of rebellion against God, it's the spirit of rape by deception. The deceiver, deception. Rape by deception. 17. See, I'll stir up against them the Medes who do not care for silver and have no delight in gold. Their bows will strike down young men. They will have no mercy on infants, nor will they look with compassion on children. Babylon, the jewel of kingdoms, the pride and glory of the Babylonians, will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah, right? So the homosexuality is part of what they're saying is going to happen. Sodomite, sodomy, so, so on and so forth. 20. They will be, never be inhabited or lived in throughout all generations, right? The wicked go down the realm of the dead. So the world will never be lived in by people who are alive because they, will be, they won't have the spirit of God in them. There no nomads will pitch their tents. There, there no sheep, excuse me, no shepherds will rest their flocks. But desert creatures will lie there. Jackals will fill their houses. Their owls will dwell there. And their wild goats will leap about. Obviously, nobody has my permission to represent God or represent me or to claim that they're doing God's work or anything like that. Okay, keep that in mind. That, that's how you get punished to the extreme and your offspring to the extreme. So anyway, jackals associated with Set, owls, Athena, the Baphomet, Pan, Mars, what have you. Mars' name is scrambled, is Rams, and so on and so forth. 22, hyenas will inhabit their strongholds, jackals are luxurious places, her time is at hand, and her days will not be prolonged. Okay, so they made it so I had difficulty. You look at it, compare this to my, some of my other videos, you can see my, my voice sounds somewhat obnoxious because they are rape cult scum who think that I shouldn't expose them for that. They don't care that one in four little girls get raped. They're probably on their way to rape them right now. The people who are directly involved in this case are directly involved in suppressing the spirit of anti-rape and stopping rape. These are pure evil rapists, okay? No matter how they look, look like a kind old man, rapist piece of shit, okay? It could be a cop that looks like the good cop and the good rapist piece of shit. No matter who you think other people are, except for my parents are blameless, I assure you, they are rapists, pieces of fucking shit. When you look at the interpretation of this scripture, it becomes clear. They are not standing in the divine order against rape, so they are complicit with rape. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. One who slackens his work is brother to one who destroys Psalm, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 18.9.